Michigan is a place unlike any other on the planet. Surrounded by the Great Lakes, it contains over 11,000 inland lakes and 36,000 miles of streams and rivers. Michigan's amazing water resources offer ample chance for active recreation, from boating, swimming, and water skiing, to more tranquil pursuits like watching loons and fishing on the glassy waters at dusk, waiting for a bite. The beauty and bounty of water resources in Michigan add to our quality of life not only for the people who enjoy them, but also for the fish and wildlife dependent upon them. Michigan's inland lakes support a huge variety of plants and animals, but it isn't just the open waters of our inland lakes that are important to fish and wildlife. The nearshore and shoreline areas also provide this crucial fish and wildlife habitat. I'm Joe Noner. I work for the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, and I'm an inland lake fish biologist. Fish habitat is the place where fish live. So it includes the clarity of the water, the um, temperature of the water, which allows fish to have good oxygen so that they can breathe. It includes structural habitat, such as aquatic vegetation and downed trees um, that provide places for fish to hide and for them to capture their prey. And it also includes um, prey resources that fish use uh, to feed and to support their growth and reproduction. The near shore and shoreline zones of the lake have been proven to be crucial habitat for many species of fish like largemouth and smallmouth bass, muscalunge, walleye, bluegill, yellow perch, northern pike, pumpkin seed sunfish, and many more. Near shore areas that have aquatic plants and woody structures like fallen trees and branches are nature's fish hatcheries. This is where fish come to lay their eggs and where young fish have safe places to hide from predators. Only a small percentage of lakes in Michigan are stocked with fish, so it is especially important to maintain these nearshore habitats to encourage natural reproduction. The vegetation on the land is also very important in protecting a lake's natural fish population. Trees, shrubs, grasses, and wildflowers provide a protective buffer around the lake. They help to filter excess nutrients and chemicals from sources like fertilizers and pesticides by slowing the flow of runoff and allowing it to absorb into the ground. Trees and shrubs at the lake edge provide shade, which helps to cool the water. Without enough trees and shrubs on the shoreline, a lake will not have enough woody habitat. They also protect against erosion from waves and wind. Their deep growing roots hold the soils in place while improving the habitat and overall aesthetic of the shoreline. For those of us fortunate to live and work along our inland lakes, we must preserve and protect them for future generations. And good shoreland stewardship begins with you. For starters, maintain a vegetated shoreline buffer at the water's edge by either preserving or planting grasses, sedges, shrubs, trees, and flowering plants. Native vegetation along your shoreline can also help to discourage unwanted nuisance animals from coming onto your property. So for example, geese like to have um, shorelines with no obstructions and clear lines of sight so that they can avoid potential predators. Having, having um, riparian vegetation and plants uh, that could potentially hide a predator um, makes the geese scared to go up onto land and so it would discourage them from coming onto your property. Minimize runoff to the lake by controlling how rainwater and snowmelt flows on your property. Runoff can carry harmful pollutants such as fertilizers and pesticides and can lead to cloudy water, nuisance plant and algae growth, and lower oxygen levels, which can kill fish. There are many options for controlling runoff on your property, from placing rain barrels beneath drain spouts to creating rain gardens that slow the movement of water and allow it to absorb into the ground. Leave fallen trees and branches in the water as they provide habitat for fish and wildlife. Shoreline property owners should um, consider allowing trees that do fall into the lake to stay in the lake. Uh, this provides areas for turtles to pull themselves out of the lake and bask. And it provides areas for fish to hide um, so that they can hide from predators and so that they can feed and find prey themselves. Um, and it concentrates fish to allow anglers to catch more fish. Leave aquatic plants in the lake as they provide habitat, food, cooling shade, and protect the lake from erosion. We encourage property owners 
to not remove native aquatic vegetation uh, from the lake. This is sometimes called weeds and, and gets a bad rap, but it's really important for the food web and for allowing fish to grow and to reproduce. Share the shore by only removing enough plants for what is necessary for navigation and recreation purposes. Minimize shoreline alterations such as adding a seawall or beach sand. Although seawalls are meant to protect the shoreland from erosion, they disrupt the natural shoreline habitat. If you have a seawall on your property, consider making your shoreline more natural. Replace the seawall with a shoreline covered by natural plants and, if necessary, stone riprap to provide habitat for wildlife and prevent the scouring of the lake bottom. Shoreline property owners play a critical role in providing habitat for fish and aquatic wildlife. So, I encourage you to take up some of the best management practices that we've talked about today. Doing these things will not only minimize erosion and increase the populations of fish and aquatic wildlife, um, but it will provide you a sense of stewardship, uh, protecting the lake and providing these benefits for generations to come. If you would like more information, contact the Michigan Natural Shoreline Partnership, Michigan Department of Natural Resources, Michigan Clean Water Score the Shore Program, and the Michigan Shoreland Stewards Program.